Welcome and Merry Christmas. So glad that you are here with us this afternoon for our Christmas Eve worship service. Welcome. In the pews, you will find little cards that ask for you to just sign your name. You can also put prayer requests on that or notes for the office. So I invite you to sign those little cards so we can uh, welcome you and know that you were here. And then you can put those into the offering plate at the time of the offering. I want to say a special thank you to all those who have helped prepare for today's services for our musicians, for our ushers, for our technology team, office staff. Thank you. When you came in this afternoon, I hope you received a bulletin and a candle. Uh, if you did not, uh, let us know. We'll make sure that we get those to you. And then there's also an ornament that you can take home with you to hang on your tree to remember today. We give thanks to all those who gave poinsettias in honor or in memory of a loved one. And we're going to, um, if you don't mind, leaving your poinsettia here for tonight and tomorrow. And then you can take it home with you next Sunday or the next time that you're here. We would appreciate that. And also the flowers on the altar uh, are in honor of the 60th anniversary of Jerry and Judy Craig. They celebrated their anniversary on Friday, so happy anniversary to them. At the time of communion, I will give instructions for it all to come forward. All are invited to come to the table. If you take communion at your church, you are welcome to take communion here. We have open communion here at St. Mark's. And I also want to share with you that we will have a Christmas Day service tomorrow at 10 a.m., that I'd like to invite you all to come to. And so now let us prepare for this service with the music of our prelude. On this Christmas Eve, we gather to proclaim what Isaiah announces, that the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all. And in the familiar account of Christ's birth, the evening sky is bright with the heavenly host singing, Glory to God in the highest. The Prince of Peace is born among us. God comes to us as fully divine and fully human, so that we may bask in and be bearers of divine light to the world. Please stand as you are able for a litany. We come to celebrate the good news of a great joy. Glory to God in the highest. Unto us is born a Savior 
who is Christ the Lord. Glory to God in the highest. A multitude of the heavenly host appears, praising God. Glory to God in the highest. Let us worship the Lord. Christ is born. Alleluia, alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
let us pray. Let us pray. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. For your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and the kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be upon you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Median and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. Thus ends the reading of the first chapter. We will go. We'll now go to the uh, next hymn.
The second lesson is from Revelation chapter 22. It is I, Jesus, who sent my angel to you with this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come, and let everyone who hears say, come, and let everyone who is thirsty come. Let anyone who wishes to take the water of life as a gift. I warn everyone who hears these words of prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to them, God will add to that person the plagues described in this book. If anyone takes away from the words of this book of this prophecy, God will take away that person's share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this book. The one who testifies to these things says, surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Thanks, uh, word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child 
While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in fields, watching, wa keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated, and I invite the children to come up to the center here and join me for a story. having a good day? Yes? Are you looking forward to something coming up? Christmas. Christmas. Actual Christmas, right? Yeah. And Santa's going to come? Are you on the nice list? You're going to try to be on the nice list. I try to be on the nice list, too. That's good. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm so glad that you brought up Santa because I'm going to tell you the story of Santa's favorite story. Did you know that Santa has a favorite story? No. Yeah, do you have a favorite story? You do? Well, let me tell you about Santa's favorite story. Oh, yours is about unicorns? Excellent. Well, Santa is going to tell the story of the first Christmas. So you'll see the pictures up on the screens, and then you can also look at the book, okay? All right, here we go. Let's see if Pastor Heather's fingers can get, get working to turn the pages. Here we are. One cold day in December, a fox was walking in the forest. As he looked at the snowy trees, he remembered that it would soon be Christmas. Then he found something. He sniffed the air and looked around. Oh my goodness. There, fast asleep against a tree, was Santa Claus. He was snoring. Oh my goodness, thought the fox. Santa Claus has come early this year. I'd better go and tell everyone he's here. 
So he hurried off to tell the other animals that lived in the forest. Santa Claus is asleep in the forest. Oh my goodness. When they heard the news, the animals hopped and ran and scampered and flew to the tree. A squirrel clattered excitedly and Santa Claus slowly stretched and yawned and then opened his eyes to see the faces of a dozen little creatures. Why are you here? they asked him. It's Christmas. Is Christmas going to be early this year? asked the fox. I'm sorry if I worried you, my friend, said Santa. I went for a long hike this morning to get in shape for Christmas Eve. But I guess I walked until I got too tired. Maybe all those heavy presents will be too much for me to deliver this year. And the animals looked alarmed. Does that mean that there won't be a Christmas anymore? Said the fox. Oh, no, 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 said Santa in a kindly voice. Christmas hasn't got to do anything with me. Sit down and I'll tell you all the story of the first Christmas. It happened long, long ago in a faraway place called Bethlehem. Some shepherds were watching over their sheep in the fields outside the town. It was very quiet and still. Suddenly, a beautiful bright star appeared in the sky. The shepherds heard a voice saying, Do not be afraid. I have good news for you all. Today in the town of Bethlehem, the Christ child has been born. God has sent his son to show what God's love is like. Follow the star to his stable. Well, the shepherds followed the star over hills and through valleys, across bridges and past little villages. All the while, the star shone brighter and brighter until at last it stopped above a small stable. The shepherds and their sheep stopped too. For there in the stable was a baby in a manger. The shepherds knew that this was the Son of God, and they knelt down and prayed. And that is what happened in Bethlehem when the Christ child came. It's my favorite story because it reminds me why we are happy at this time of year. Love was the gift God gave to us on the first Christmas, and it still is, you know. And this love is, for, is far better than any present I could ever deliver. Santa Claus put his hands in his pockets and looked slowly around the circle of animals, with a kind and happy smile upon his face. How silly we've been, said the fox, to think that Christmas was only about presents. So now you know, said Santa, but come on, you're right that it's almost Christmas. Let's go back to my place and get things ready. All the animals followed as Santa Claus ran off towards his house. He didn't even look tired anymore. 
because he had remembered how much fun his work was going to be. The animal stayed at Santa's house until Christmas Day and helped him every way they could. Of course, the reindeer helped by going out with him to deliver the presents the night before. And after a fine Christmas dinner, Santa gave every animal a present. And as they sat around the fireplace later in the day, they all asked to hear Santa's favorite story again. It was a very special Christmas day for everyone. Santa was sure that he had the nicest time of all, though, because he remembered that the best present ever is Christmas itself. The end. Yes, on Christmas, that very first Christmas, it had nothing to do with Santa Claus. It was all about Jesus being born Jesus the Christ, he was born to be our Savior. And we give presents to one another to show our love for each other, just as Jesus was the best present we've ever received. And that was the first Christmas. I hope you all remember that. And maybe tomorrow on Jesus' birthday, you could even sing happy birthday to Jesus as you share a meal or as you exchange presents with one another. I hope you all have a very Merry Christmas, and I hope that you celebrate Jesus and remember he is here with us still in our hearts, and he is the best gift we've ever received. Thank you, everyone. You may go back you can sit with your families.
us recite the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge the one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With wonder and thanksgiving for Christ's coming into the world, we pray for the church, the life of the earth, and the whole human family. Your infant love is born to us this night. With choirs of angels, the church proclaims the good news. Send us out as messengers of hope that has come to all people. God of grace, hear our prayer. You are pleased to dwell with your creatures and the whole earth sings for joy. Renew the splendor of creation from the smallest cell to the widest galaxies. Guide us to be wise stewards of your gifts for the sake of generations to come. God of grace, hear our prayers. Your authority is over the nations. Break the broad of oppression in every land and free all people from fear. Bring peace where there is war, compassion where there is suffering, and healing where there is disease. God of grace, hear our prayer. You cherish those who are most vulnerable. Protect infants and children and bless those who care for them. Watch over women giving birth, attending the dying, and relieve who are in pain. Especially we pray for Harley, Gary, Eva, Jerry, Jackie, Elena, Mike, Celia, Meredith, J.D., Rudy, Hazel, Kay, Sandy, Brenda, Tim, D., Richard, Brian, and Susan. Shelter refugees' families and those who have no home. God of grace. Your loving kindness embraces everyone in need. Help any for whom this season is lonely or joyless. Comfort those among us or known to us who are experiencing distress of body, body and mind, missing loved ones or grieving, especially the bird family. God of grace, hear our prayer. You welcome those who have died into the joy joyous light of glory. We give thanks for the saints of every time and place who have praised you with lives of faith and humility. Inspire us by their example to love you by serving others. God of grace, hear our prayer. Pondering the mystery of eternal love made flesh in Christ Jesus, we commend all for whom we pray to the mercy of God. Amen.
You may be seated as we receive our offering. Let us pray. God of abundance, receive and bless these gifts we have offered. Join our hearts with the song of the angels and gather us at your table of celebration. Strengthen us to share with all the world the abundance of your grace upon grace, poured out in Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. Amen. Holy God, creator of all and source of life, at the birth of, of time, your word brought light into the world. In the fullness of time, you sent your word, born of Mary, to shine in our darkness 
and to make us your sons and daughters. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his birth and life among us, his death and resurrection, we await his coming again when all things will be restored in him. By your Spirit, bless us and this bread and cup that held and nourished by you, we may live as your children, shining with the light of your Son. Through him, all glory and honors is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. A note about the distribution of communion. As I said earlier, all are welcome to come to the table. If you receive communion in your home congregation, you are welcome to receive communion here. We do serve communion in prepackaged um, sets. We do have grape juice. We also have a gluten-free option, and then we have our regular. If you prefer to come forward for a blessing, you are welcome to also do that. You'll be guided down the center aisle to receive communion from myself or our assistant, and then you will return using the outside aisles to your pew, where then you may take communion. If you'd like to come forward and pray at the communion rail, you're also welcome to do that. And so now, glory to God in the highest. Come to the table of peace. Amen.
Please stand as you are able. The God of hope, fill us with all joy and peace in believing, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Through Christ Jesus, the Word made flesh. Amen. And let us pray. God, our Redeemer, you have fed us at this table with the gifts of grace, truth, and life. As you have gathered us in joy, send us forth as messengers of your peace. Make us shine with the good news of your glory, born to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we will have our candle lighting, and the ushers will be coming down the aisle to pass the lights from the Christ candle to each of you. We ask that you hold your candle upright if it is lit, and let the person next to you turn theirs if it's not lit to light theirs. That way, wax is not dripped on you. And we will be singing Silent Night, but beginning with humming of Silent Night as we light our candles.
May the word born this night be new and abundant life for you. The blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Christ the Savior is born. Go in peace and proclaim the good news. Thanks be to God. Merry Christmas, everyone. <laughs>